coming up on Ag Week TV. Weather is the top issue affecting commodity prices right now. We'll hear about the top concerns facing producers at the World Pork Expo in Iowa. The crazy planting season of 2022 is about to end. And a Ukrainian farmer visits the region to get help for his war-torn homeland. Welcome to Ag Week TV and happy Father's Day weekend. I'm Emily Beal. The June WASDE report was generally neutral wheat, negative corn, and friendly to soybeans. Randy Martinson of Martinson Ag Risk Management says right now the big factor is weather. On the Ag Week market wrap, Martinson said when USDA's acreage report comes out June 30th, we'll likely see changes in production numbers. So he says in the meantime, the market will revolve around the weather. After a cool, wet spring delayed planting around the upper Midwest, forecasts are now calling for a hot, dry growing season. It's going to become a weather market. You know, we are look like we're going to see some warmer, drier weather, which will likely wrap up a lot of planting progress here uh, in the next week. So, yeah, it, I think right now weather and growing conditions are going to be the big driver. You can see our full market wrap on agweek.com. This has been an unusual year for many farmers. That's especially true for Larry Linneman, who farms in Northeast North Dakota. The wet spring put his planting about three weeks behind on some crops. Wet ground forced him to use two tractors to pull his air seeder to plant 500 acres of wheat. Linneman says despite it being so late, he needed to get that wheat planted to keep his rotation for sugar beets. And he had already fertilized the ground last fall. So he thought it was important to get it planted despite the challenges. It just was, uh, mush underneath and it was a uh, you know inch of dry dirt on top it just couldn't pull it so we had to put two tractors on to get her through. Linneman raises dry edible beans, wheat, sugar beets and corn on about 8,400 acres near Reynolds. He says this is the latest he's done the majority of his planting but he wanted to avoid prevented plant and he says despite the late finish he's optimistic there's still enough growing season left. Several issues took center stage at the World Pork Expo held in Des Moines, Iowa. Among producers' concerns are more access to foreign workers, the threat of African swine fever, and a new California law that could affect all American producers. We have the ability to raise the most efficient, affordable product on the globe. But Terry Walters, the president of the National Pork Producers, says one thing that's holding them back is a shortage of workers. He says they need reform in the H-2A visa program for foreign workers. The jobs in our farms are very technical, and with that technical training that it takes to get that uh, employee up and running and being really efficient in their in their job, then it's time for them to go home. And so we need to do, uh, we need to expand the the numbers that we have available to us in the program, but we also need to extend the timeline that we're allowed to have those people here. Although pork prices are good, input prices are high as well, especially feed. In addition, pork producers fear an African swine fever outbreak. Incoming Pork Producers Council President Scott Hayes says since 30% of U.S. pork output goes overseas, they're concerned about any trade disruption. There's always some issues there that, that we're working on and, and keeping those doors open. And trades are very important to all, all producers, important to the industry, and so we're excited that the product's still moving out of the country. Another looming issue at the Expo is California's Proposition 12, which calls for strict rules in how pigs are raised. It was to take effect in January, but is being appealed to the Supreme Court. As the summer rolls around, ranchers should make sure their herds are protected against anthrax. The bacterial disease impacts mostly cattle. Anthrax is extremely resistant and once present can be expected to be in spore form for many years. When cattle are exposed to those spores, uh, and they ingest them or, or eat them basically, then those uh, bacteria can grow within the animal and cause the production of toxins. Those toxins really create some fatal situations. Daly advises ranchers to implement the anthrax vaccine into their management plan, especially in areas of drought. And in dry drought conditions, we have animals that are grazing closer to the ground, getting their forage and inhaling or ingesting more dirt, basically, and more of those spores. Anthrax is potentially deadly to both livestock and people. Farmers in war-torn Ukraine are in desperate need of help. Many are unable to harvest their winter wheat crops because Russian troops have put mines in their fields. 
One Ukrainian farmer has traveled to North Dakota to ask for help. Roman Greenshin is asking farmers to pledge a penny a bushel to help Ukraine's farmers. The tongue-in-cheek story in Ukraine right now is farmers have become one of the world's biggest military forces, all because they keep finding and recovering tanks and missiles in their grain fields. But no one is laughing at the tragedy of farm life in Ukraine. Roads and farm fields have been mined. Farmers are pulling out Russian weapons from grain fields. That makes it uh, difficult and dangerous, so to say, Russian rule it whether to harvest or not. Because winter crops are about to be ready to be harvested, but the farmers are considering whether to harvest it or not. That's Roman Greenshin of Ukraine. Over the years, he has led countless Ukrainian ag trade missions here to NDSU and eastern North Dakota. Now he comes back, representing a new effort to rebuild Ukraine's farming community, family by family. To think about instead of rain falling down, that bombs are falling down from the sky, and you literally have um, tanks in your field protecting you. It's stories like this that has North Dakota ag leaders like John Birch of Birch Farms near Hillsboro, who are stepping up to assist Roman and Ukrainian farmers. Grain fields ready for harvest are even targets. Roman says that farmers who are trying to combine are sometimes facing a field burned. Our soldiers, they are literally running through the fields with these uh, uh, blankets and trying to take, take down the fires. Greenshin's group called World to Rebuild Rural Ukraine is also accepting cash donations. Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll see what one university is doing to help ease the shortage of veterinarians. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has the storage, conditioning, and handling equipment to fit any size operation. With a wide variety of options and accessories, including our patented Blockbuster Auger to help break up blockages over the center sump gate, and a full line of mixed flow grain dryers. With even heating, excellent efficiency, and expandable capacities, protect your investment and market your grain. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with Superior Grain Equipment. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. All right, here's the free gift I got for opening up a checking account. Let's see what I got. Okay, guys, so I got this portable DVD player. Yeah, I'm not sure why my bag would give me a tiny waffle maker. So it's a tumbler, but it doesn't fit in any of my cup holders. I wasn't even sure they still made these. Is it for kids? Is this for kids? Don't fall for the free gift. Find a bank that cares about what you really need. Cornerstone Bank. At Advanced Grain Handling Systems, we're your full-service grain dryer and bin project partner. We'll handle everything from start to finish. These guys are all in one. That was one of the big draws. They were the general. They took care of the electrical. They took care of the cement, took care of everything. Whether your next project is big or small, let our team help with it all. Visit advancedgrainhandling.com. Dynaflow is the ultimate high-volume water management pump. Whether you're experiencing flooding, emptying sloughs, transferring ponds, or working on irrigation, the Dynaflow pump works in as little as 18 inches of water and is designed to move 3,000 gallons per minute. The Dynaflow lift pump is the perfect upgrade to your drain tile system. Using line shaft turbine pump technology, these pumps are made to last while operating efficiently. Dynaflow drain tile pumps can move up to 1,500 gallons per minute, up to 3,400 feet away. Ag Week TV Soy Insight, brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. Late planting means extra challenges for weed control this season. In this month's Soy Insight, we have some advice about spraying. We're here in an NDSU soybean research test plot with extension weed specialist Joe Eichley. Now you've told me some of these are untreated and some are treated with a pre-emerge, which is really important information for growers this year given our crazy spring weather, isn't it? 
This trial behind me is one of the perfect backdrops for some of the questions I'm getting at the moment. Uh, several of these checkerboard pattern looking areas have a lot of green and those did not get a pre-emergence herbicide. Uh, basically all the green except for three or four rows that you're seeing are weeds coming in between the soybean rows. So we're getting up against some deadlines now. For those who have extend or extend flex soybean systems and wish to apply dicamba on those fields, we know we have a June 30th cutoff date. For others, when we look at things like the Enlist soybean technology, uh, any of the Liberty Link soybean technology, we have growth stage cutoffs. So if a farmer didn't get to pre-emergence, what to do now? This year with saturated soils, the weeds are all coming. They're all coming at once. And now that we're into the, into the heat of summer, they're gonna be growing very rapidly. So this means that if you did not get a pre-emergence herbicide onto that field to hold those weeds back, you may have to spray fields sooner than you even anticipate. And so we've got some plots out here, I think that show that, that we have some soybeans at the unifoliate stage, about two and a half weeks old, and we have weeds taller than those soybeans already. So then what are the impacts of late spring on next year's planting? There's really only one product that comes to my mind in soybean that if we apply it late, might influence next year, and that would be Femesifin. So main brand names are Reflex or Flexstar that we use in soybean, plenty of generics on the market. And the main thing that comes to my mind is as a 10 month crop rotation to corn. So let's say we apply that on July 15th. That means you won't be able to plant corn until May 15th at the earliest next year. Thanks Joe, NDSU Extension Weed Specialist, Joe Eichley. There's a serious shortage of veterinarians, but the pre-vet program at the University of Minnesota Crookston is helping to ease that. In our Ag Week cover story, we meet a graduate of the program who's now practicing in Western North Dakota. Oh, I have wanted to be vent since I was about four. Um, and it's never changed. Dr. Samantha Zuck Roscoe fulfilled that childhood dream with help in part from a program at the University of Minnesota Crookston. The small class sizes and the hands-on experience was what sold me, um, and it was a family. Zuck Roscoe graduated from the pre-veterinary program at UMC. Crookston's program is part of the University of Minnesota's Veterinary Food Animal Scholars, or VetFast, program. Students can apply while attending UMC. Most every class that we had had a hands-on lab, and it just exposed you to all sorts of different things. Students in the VetFast program have priority for getting into the U of M's vet school and a much higher rate of acceptance to other vet schools. Zuck Roscoe graduated from Washington State in 2017 and a couple of years later returned to Western North Dakota to practice. I see mostly small animal, but I do the occasional um, large animal as well. We see mostly cattle and horses here. Large animal is unpredictable. You gotta do everything safely. We might be a normal day of appointments with no emergencies or urgent cares versus next day where we have 20 urgent cares and a full schedule of appointments and then have to work in a calving <laughs> in the middle of it. Something different every day. You can read much more in the next Ag Week magazine at agweek.com. The University of Minnesota is also teaming up with the high school to advance research into Kernza. Alexandria High School Ag students are working with the U of M to grow test plots. Kernza is a perennial grain that's been getting buzz in recent years for its multiple uses as a forage, a healthy food for people, and a plant that's good for the environment. This is really t uh, talked about as a perennial grass that uh, can help clean up our, our waterways, eliminate phosphorus and nitrogen leaching into our water system. And this is one reason why we want to be proactive, as well as helping with our buffer strips and our waterways in Minnesota. The U of M is working with the Land Institute in Kansas, which is working on increasing Kernza yields and ways to use it in food production. Lars Dropic is one of the students doing the research. He says it would be great for their livestock, as you can graze it and it will grow back by harvest time. I think it would be good for our farm because then we could graze it right away in the spring when the pastures might not be ready, and then we could harvest it later that year and use it for feed. The high school planted two acres of Kernza and will plant two more acres in August. Ahead on Ag Week TV, a delegation from Asia visits Fargo to learn about the region's soybeans. I'm Peter Bosch. I've been working with Gateway Building Systems for a little over 20 years now. I chose Gateway Building Systems to build my shop because I wanted a building that could both be used for my equipment and as a place for my family to hang out and do things. 
I would advise anybody that's thinking about working with Gateway to go in and talk to the guys there and tell them your plans and your future dreams and let them design something for you. Good work, good bacon, good life. It's the trans system's way. Good work, good bacon, good life. Let's me live. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has the storage, conditioning, and handling equipment to fit any size operation with a wide variety of options and accessories, including our patented Blockbuster Auger to help break up blockages over the center sump gate and a full line of mixed flow grain dryers with even heating, excellent efficiency, and expandable capacities. Protect your investment and market your grain. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with Superior Grain Equipment. For over 130 years, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska has been providing protection from the unexpected. Farmers and ranchers choose Farmers Mutual insurance coverage for their industry experience, prompt claim service, and unmatched financial strength. Experience an insurance plan that's customized for your operation. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. When can the region expect a break from the heat? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. Well, it's summer weather for sure. We've got some hot weather into the northern plains and other parts of the area. Veritable heat wave going on this first uh, uh, middle weekend of June into North Dakota, South Dakota, parts of Minnesota. That won't last long, but it does look like the weather will remain warmer than average for a while. With this weather pattern, summer sun, those thunderstorms are doing their thing. Too much in some spots, not enough rain in others. That, of course, is typical. It's which way that pendulum swings that we go into a little too wet of a summer summer or too dry of a summer, and it's pretty early in the summer to really be finishing that topic. With that in mind, we'll take a look at where the drought is now and where it is expected to expand over the next uh, few weeks. Hot weather up into the northern plains, as I mentioned, courtesy the jet stream, which has built a strong high-pressure ridge in the middle of North America, bounded by troughs on either side. In other words, it's that famous uh, W-shaped looking weather pattern, which uh, gets hot in the middle and is much cooler on either side. If this were wintertime, it would be a lot cooler on either side, but uh, as it is, it's definitely some hot with temperatures into the uh, 90s and 100s in parts of places as far north as North Dakota this first weekend. That heat will settle back, and this hot weather, which will mostly be weather in the 90s, will settle back into places as where it typically is. In the summertime, northern plains will settle back into the 80s. It'll be fairly warm this week throughout the Great Lakes states. The cool weather up around Hudson Bay, a lot of dry weather and warm weather into western Canada, some scattered shower weather into the Pacific Northwest where things have been a little wetter and a little cooler, but not a lot of generally wet weather anywhere in the United States. And that hot weather will remain down in the southern states, in fact most of the country, in a relatively warm weather pattern. By the end of this first week, the uh, flatness begins to appear in the jet stream. This is more typical of a summer weather pattern, tends to keep the heat less oppressive and more standard, more typical, and generally in places where they're more used to it. As we get into the second week of the forecast, which takes us up to just before the Independence Day holiday, a little bit of ridging is building up again, and that will likely or at least potentially draw some hot weather northward. We'll see how far right now it doesn't look that bad. As far as precipitation goes, this coming week there will be some scattered showers, thunderstorms, enough to say it'll be slightly wetter than average into much of the northern plains back through the southwest. Now this won't be particularly rainy, but stray storms down there will likely cause some lightning fires and that sort of thing. Most of the Midwest and most of the West will be dry this week. 
Second week, not that much of a shift in the pattern with, again, the threat for thunderstorms in the north. The driest weather in the country and the most persistent drought continues to be over the Rocky Mountains, the southwest, up into the high plains. And with the weather pattern the way it is, there may be some eastward expansion, but likely not very much this summer. The team at North Star Egg is committed to quality and committed to you. We're not just a full service dealer, we're farmers too, so we know you need the best machinery and services that'll keep you going all season long. We have the largest equipment inventory in the upper Midwest with a well-equipped parts and service department. So whether you need machinery tomorrow or parts today, stop in and experience what North Star Egg can offer on our website at northstar-egg.com or give us a call at 701-361-4790. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. AuctionBlock.com First with online equipment auctions in 1999. First in worldwide registered users. AuctionBlock.com Online farm, construction, and transportation equipment auctions every Wednesday. Sell with the leader. Call AuctionBlock today, 218-483-7880 or visit us online at AuctionBlock.com it's going to be an interesting year in agriculture. We have already seen the markets trade to new crop highs and levels not seen in years. There is uncertainty around the 2022 growing season. Will drought impact production? How many acres will be switched? And will demand remain strong? Are you getting the information you need to make the right marketing decisions? With the changing market environment, maybe it's time to change how you approach your grain marketing. Let Martinson Ag Risk Management get you the news that matters and a marketing plan that suits your needs. Spray Advantage is a full-line, full-service dealer with everything you need for fertilizer and chemical applications, like electronics from Microtrack and Raven, pumps by Banjo and John Blue, a full line of poly parts, tanks, and spray tips. We support the equipment we sell with factory-trained service technicians and a well-stocked parts department. It's our commitment to offer you quality products at competitive prices with the best financing options available. Spray Advantage, proudly serving North Dakota and Minnesota. The Northern Crops Institute in Fargo hosts many groups, but they had to pause that during COVID. NCI recently hosted its first international delegation since the pandemic began. The attendees came from an array of Asian countries to learn more about the region's soybean industry. Well, we are extremely excited to be back uh, giving the uh, in-person programs. Uh, there's nothing like being able to be face-to-face -face in person with, with these customers. Brian Sorensen is the program manager for the Northern Crops Institute. This week, they're hosting soybean buyers from six Asian countries. They'll learn about the region's soybean industry at the five-day food-grade soybean procurement course. So this one, we're going to have this one under these. The Midwest produces a high volumes of soybeans. It's very productive. And there's a surplus in this area when you think about it. You know, we grow more than they consume with, with the animal feed markets or human food markets. So we need to find customers for them internationally to help buy those extra soybeans, whether it's for human foods or animal feed or use in aquaculture. Alan Polk is the Asian Division Director for the World Initiative for Soy and Human Health, or WISH. Polk believes that the Midwest soybean industry is a valuable resource for Asian countries and the group is thankful to be back in the region. So we are really excited to learn about the poor grade soybean and the soybean production. Pew also works with WISH and the American Soybean Association. Attention everyone, Ag Week wants to see your patriotic colors. For the fifth year in a row, Michael Pates will be highlighting flags on farms in the region for the 4th of July. And this year, we want you to be part of the story. Submit your photos and anecdotes about flags on your farm to jschlecht at agweek.com by June 24th. Still ahead on Agweek TV, a big celebration is coming up at North Dakota's oldest family farm. Attention farmers and farming communities, the herbicide Paraquat has been linked to Parkinson's disease. 
Paraquat, also known as Gramoxone, is still being used in the U.S. on corn, soy, and wheat crops and puts farm workers in danger. Producers across the country have filed lawsuits claiming that Paraquat caused their Parkinson's disease and that the manufacturer failed to warn about the chemical's risk of neurological damage. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with Parkinson's after direct or indirect exposure to Paraquat, call or visit SolbergLaw.com. The team at North Star Egg is committed to quality and committed to you. We're not just a full-service dealer, we're farmers too, so we know you need the best machinery and services that'll keep you going all season long. We have the largest equipment inventory in the Upper Midwest with a well-equipped parts and service department. So whether you need machinery tomorrow or parts today, stop in and experience what North Star Egg can offer on our website at northstar-egg.com or give us a call at 701-361-4790. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts the dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for watching Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. North Dakota's oldest family-run farm will celebrate 150 years next weekend. 340 descendants of Eric and Kari Evenson will gather at the farm near Mayville, where they made their home when they came to the U.S. from Scandinavia in 1872. When the Evensons arrived, they lived in a log home they dug into a hill. Their great-great-granddaughter still lives in the family home they built later. I grew up just down the road from here, and this is my home away from home, grandma and grandpa lived here. I just, I never in a million years as a child would have dreamt that this would be a place I'd be able to raise my own family someday. And I'm so grateful. The original plow used on the farm is on display. The farm is also home to the state's largest oak tree, estimated to be 450 years old. Stories you'll only see on agweek.com and in Agweek magazine this week. A Minnesota dairy has been recognized for its sustainability practices. And a native of the largest pork producing state is leading the National Pork Producers Council in a new energized direction. We appreciate you watching Ag Week TV. Remember to check us out daily on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to keep up on all your ag news. Have a great week.